What's going on everybody, Stained Glass Assassin? It's Friday, Space Jam hits theaters, but it looks like it's already hit the wall with the critics. Uh, they are kind of tearing this movie apart already, which I can't say that I'm shocked. I mean, I, I, I've seen the trailer. Nobody asked for this movie. Um, the biggest news leading up to this release was Lola Bunny and how they were, you know, people were upset about the desexualization of the character. I, I don't know, I didn't even bother reading it, but if that's the biggest news leading up to your release, not the actual movie itself, this movie was going to have problems. But I guess what I find the most shocking is that the critics are actually criticizing the movie. I mean, it stars one of their own. I mean, LeBron James is a woke social justice warrior who toes the line and does whatever the big suits tell him to do. And of course, he's in line with the Communist Party of China. So very strange to see this movie get any type of negative review, given that Brie Larson, who's also a kind of praised social justice warrior, her movie got put on the same pedestal as you know Citizen Kane. So I don't know. I thought that was just kind of strange, but I did like some of these reviews. Some of them made me laugh out loud, uh, and then some of them were kind of uh, contradictory. I don't know. So let me scroll down here and point out. Well, first let me just look at the actual ratings. 36 on the tomato meter. I mean that's low for even a bad movie. And obviously we haven't even gotten any audience score yet, so I'm predicting this movie will uh, plummet even further. Again, not that I'm surprised. But anyway, as for the reviews themselves, there's one right here right off the bat. I like this one from Wen Li Ma. I think that's how you pronounce it, but it says, It's hard not to feel like you've been swimming in some WB marketing executive's wet dream for two hours. So, two hours? Oh, I didn't even catch that. Two hours for a Space Jam movie? Holy crap. That's, uh, I mean, I thought Endgame was a little long, but two hours for a Space Jam film, wow. Scroll down a little further, I like this one here from, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, from Johnny from the New York Post. He puts, in the pantheon of misguided sequels and reboots, a new legacy is right up there with Paul, Bar Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, and Little Fockers. Yeah, those were bad. Um, actually, I didn't see Mall Cop 2, I don't think I could stomach it, but I did sit through Dumb and Dumber... 2 and Anchorman 2 so I get where he's coming from you know not so good but you know the one thing that I noticed in these reviews which I'm noticing a lot with people's reviews are that they seem to uh, get lost into what they're criticizing almost like they contradict themselves like for instance Peter Travers from ABC News uh, writes critics will pick on this sequel it's what we do when an alleged creative enterprise turns into a corporate ad campaign really I mean, that's what most movies and TV shows are all about. But uh, it's funny that you pick on it because it's an ad campaign, but if a movie or a TV show falls in line with your uh, communist overlords, you praise the movie, like Mulan, or somebody like John Cena, who was so, so, so sorry. He was brave for having the balls to apologize. Yeah. Anyway, it goes on to say, Expect no grumbles from the under-13 crowd, eager to eyeball LeBron James jamming in cyberspace with cartoon royalty. I'm kind of confused, though, because as far as I know, this movie is aimed at the under-13 crowd, right? So basically, he's saying that this movie, well, I'm assuming he's not very happy with this movie because he gave it a rotten score, but yet he says that the under-13 crowd will essentially love it. But that's who it's aimed at. So, I don't know, were you expecting White Man Can't Jump? I mean, were you expecting to be entertained by this? Because, let me tell you, I've seen a lot of children's movies with my nephews that I didn't like, but they're not aimed at me. They're aimed at my nephews. They loved it. I thought it was just a whatever film. So, the under-13 crowd's going to love it? Then that means it's a success in their eyes. If you wanted something more adult, then go watch Above the Rim. You know, there's another one up here that I caught... Right, actually, I, I, when I started filming this, uh, which passed me over the first time that I read the article, it's right uh, right here. Peter Gray from the AU Review writes, uh, Mostly child-friendly fare that proves a colorful, inexplicable distraction that's unlikely to retain, ironically, any type of legacy for itself. Again, this is a children's movie, so a mostly child-friendly fare is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's not... I, I don't know. I, may, maybe I'm reading into that wrong, but it seems like Peter Gray and the other guy were upset that they weren't as entertained by it as they should be. But it's not for you, it's for your kids. So if the kids love it, then it should be a success. Maybe they should start getting some kids to review, you know, and actually be critics. 
Maybe then you'll listen to your customers. I don't know. But anyway, down here, Metacritic isn't any much better. It had four positive reviews, 14 mixed reviews, and 11 negative. Again, nobody's giving this much praise. Scroll down a little bit further, and I think my favorite review is from G. Allen Johnson from the San Francisco Chronicle. He says, The original Space Jam was an out-of-nowhere delight, and Jordan gave space to his fellow live-action co-stars, such as Bill Murray, Larry Bird, and Wayne Knight. Basically, he's saying that LeBron can't hold Michael Jordan's jockstrap, whether it's on the court or on the big screen. Uh, but anyway, he goes on to say that it was also in and out in 87 minutes. And he says, this is a bloated 115 minutes. I, I'm shocked with that. I didn't even catch the runtime. I can't believe it's basically two hours. Wow. Two hours for a Space Jam movie. That's just way too long. And of course, you got to get the typical uh, review that has a tongue twister. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to read this on the first try, but that seems to be the big kind of uh, proving that you're a professional critic. It says, the movie is just a big, empty declaration of corporate dominance, a, whirl a whirling CGI tornado that, like a much stupider Tasmanian devil, ingests, barely processes, and then promptly regurgitates everything in its path. It's up Chuck Jones. Basically, he's saying it sucks. I mean, I would just prefer if Justin Chang or some of these other people just come out and said, hey, look, this movie blows. Don't go see it. You know, or hey, did you work hard for your paycheck this week? Don't waste your money. Wait for it to come out in streaming or something. I don't know, but you got to, you know, doctor it up with all these big words and tongue twisters and Peter Piker, pick the peck 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 peppers. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's Space Jam. It doesn't look good. Uh, again, I expected the movie to get high praise given that LeBron James is in it, and it's all, you know, I thought it would be kind of this flagship for social justice, uh, you know, movies and identity politics, but if it's getting roasted by the critics, it must be bad. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Are you going to go see it? I know I'm not going to go see it, and I don't think I'm going to take my nephews. I think we'll just sit down, have popcorn, and watch the actual Space Jam, and uh, have fun with that. But anyway, let me know in the comments while you're down there. Like and subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. And until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.